first time ever in Fairbury. Do you guys like it here? Yeah! I do too. Fairbury's been really cool. Like he said, my name's Mike Smith, and I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. And I know a lot of you guys have probably been to Lincoln. You guys know where that is. And in Lincoln, I do a lot of things with skateboarding. I have a skate park, and I do a lot of stuff with kids that ride skateboards. And I get the opportunity to travel all across the country and just talk to kids just like you. And so I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my life. When I was a fourth grader, you guys will be fourth graders someday, right? Yeah. When I was a fourth grader, I was really, really small. Like, I was the smallest kid in my class. I was just a really, really tiny little guy. And I didn't really do anything. I wasn't really good at sports, I didn't really have a lot of friends, I kind of spent a lot of time hanging out by myself, and I came home one day and I turned on the TV, and when I turned on the TV, it was the first time I ever saw somebody riding a skateboard. I saw Tony Hawk on a skateboard, he went up this huge ramp, he came back down, and I remember seeing it thinking, I want to be just like Tony Hawk. I want to, I want to do the tricks that he does, I want to be a professional skateboarder, that's what I want to do. And I saw him do this trick on this ramp, and I thought, I need to be a professional skateboarder. Right? Who's your hero? Your parents are your hero. Who's your hero? Blake's your hero. Blake's my hero too. Who's your hero? Who? Leon. Who's your hero? Alvin. Alvin. What about you? Do you have a hero? No, no hero, maybe someday. Well, T-Roy was my hero. You guys can put your hands down. T-Roy was my hero. He was the guy that I looked up to and I wanted to be just like him and I would copy everything that he would do. And one day, T-Roy and his friends, they were 8th graders, I was a 4th grader, T-Roy and his friends, they saw me for the first time. They were like standing on their side of the skate park and they looked over and they saw me skateboarding for the first time. And they started to walk over towards me. And I had that moment where I got really, really excited because I was like, like, this is my hero. This is the guy I look up to. This is the person I want to be most like than anybody in the world. I want to look like him and skate like him and act like him. And he saw me and he started coming over towards me. And I was in my own little spot in the skate park and I started trying to do a trick because I wanted to impress him and I wanted to think I was really cool. And as I was trying to practice him and his friends, they kind of skated up and then they got like 20 feet from me and they just stopped. And they looked at me and this was the first time this has ever happened. Him and his friends, they just started to make fun of me. They made fun of my clothes, they made fun of my hair. They told me I wasn't good at skateboarding. They told me I should quit. They just picked on me really, really bad that day at the skate park. And I just remember standing there holding my skateboard, looking at these guys talking to me, and, and saying all these like really hurtful things. And it really hurt. Like, it was the first time a hero like that had ever said something to me. They skateboarded off, and I just walked home. But then I grew up, and we moved to another town. And I was still that really small, little short kid. And I wanted to fit in, so I didn't know what to do, so I just started playing sports, because that's what everybody else did. But everybody kept telling me, Mike, you're not big enough. You're not good enough, you're not fast enough, you're not strong enough, you can't do it. I used to get so mad, because I just wanted to play football, and I just wanted to play basketball, and I just wanted to have friends, and I just wanted to fit in with everybody else. But everybody kept telling me, Mike, you're not good enough, you can't do it. But then one day, I went to school, and I woke up, and I literally had a beard. It was like, poof, just like this thing on my face. And I was like, oh man, like what happened? Like I just, I grew up and I got really big, and I went from this little kid that, that nobody really knew, that nobody really talked to, that nobody was really friends with, to this big kid that was all of a sudden really good at sports. I'd go to the weight room and I'd lift weights and I'd try to get really big muscles. And I'd start playing basketball and I got, do you like big muscles? Okay, you don't need big muscles. But I just, I just started working out and I got really, really good at sports. And all of a sudden I went to, did you guys go to the state basketball tournament this year? Yeah, you guys got to go. When I was in high school I got to do the same thing. My basketball team was the first time our town had ever made it. We were really, really good at sports. All of a sudden, I had all these friends. And everybody looked up to me, and everybody knew who I was. And I went from this kid that used to get picked on, I turned into this kid who just turned really, really mean. And I just became a bully. And I started treating people really mean. Because I had been this kid that was picked on for so long. Once I got big, and once I got friends, and once I thought I was cool, I just turned into somebody who was really, really mean, and I treated people really, really poorly. I'd make fun of people because I didn't want to get my feelings hurt. Hate. The opposite of love is hate, right? Okay, so when people say things, when somebody says something hurtful to you, it almost like it leaves a scar. Like if somebody says something really mean to you, they say that it leaves this like scar inside of your brain. Like if I ask any one of your teachers, how long have you been teaching? About 10 years? Uh, yeah. Okay, so she's been teaching for like 11 years. That's a really long time, right? Yeah, so she's in her mid-30s, been teaching for like 11 years. She can probably remember the name of somebody that said something mean to her when she was your age, right? Yes. What about you? Can you guys remember the name of somebody who said something hurtful? That was what, 12, 13 years ago? At least. So what happens when somebody says something mean, it leaves a what? When you're in kindergarten, you start out like this. This piece of paper is perfect, right? There's nothing wrong with it. 
but that somebody says, you know what? You're not good enough. And leaves a little scar. And it says, you're not my friend. You can't sit by us on the bus. You can't sit at my lunch table. I don't like your hair. You're not very smart. I don't think you're cool. Mike, you can't skateboard. Maybe you should quit. Maybe you should give up. That's left a lot of what? Scars. You guys think you can do it? Yeah. yeah. All right, try. You got 30 seconds to make it as flat as you can. Make all those scars go away. I heard sticking your tongue out helps. You guys cheer him on. Does that look like this? No. It's really hard to take those scars away, huh? What would happen if everybody else on the playground would want like this? What if they all would want, I need you guys to do this with me. What if everybody would want like this and just yell boo as loud as they could? Now here's what I want you guys to realize. I, I spoke in an elementary school one time, and I talked to the school. The teacher went, she wrote something on the, the chalkboard, and a kid in class turned around and like made fun of another kid, and every other kid in that classroom put their thumbs down and screamed boo at the kid. And when the teacher turned around, the bully was like, <gasps> here's what I want you to do. I want you to bully me. tell you guys one more story. When I was a senior in high school, I was like the, the, the kid that was the, you know, like the quarterback and the basketball player. And everybody looked up to me and everybody knew who I was in my small little town. And when I was a senior in high school, the only way that I was going to get out of my town was if I got a scholarship to play basketball at a big college. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play basketball in college. And I remember going to the gym one day when I was walking to the gym. I looked in the hallway and I saw this kid sitting in the hall. So it was this freshman kid just sitting with his head down. He didn't have any friends. And nobody knew him, and nobody really liked him, and his name was Calvin. And Calvin just sat in the hallways with his head down. But my senior year of high school, I thought, man, maybe, maybe I can be Calvin's friend. Like, maybe I can help Calvin. We were really different. I liked sports, Calvin didn't like sports. I had a lot of friends, Calvin didn't have a lot of friends. But I thought, man, maybe I can help this kid. Maybe I can help Calvin. Because Calvin's life, he'd been picked on. So Calvin looked like this. Calvin had lots and lots of scars because lots and lots of people had picked on him. So my senior year of high school, I thought, okay, I'm going to make Calvin my best friend, and I'm going to help him. So every day before school, I would, I would talk to Calvin, and I would take Calvin, and we would go down to the gym, and we would play basketball. And then we would play, we would play baseball. And then we would go to his house, and we would play video games. And Calvin just became my best friend. And when I graduated high school, the last day that I was in school, before I left, I got a chance to talk to Calvin. And he said that if he'd never met me that day, he never met me when we were in high school, and I never was his friend, and I never talked to him, but he didn't think he would have any friends. See, he was this kid that got picked on because he was really, really different. And we're all really different from each other, right? You don't look like me, do you? No. You're lucky. But yeah, he just, we were really, really different. But I have this idea, and I want you guys to understand this. When we bully each other, what do we leave in each other's life? A scar. You have a scar on your brain. And you know what they say about that scar on your brain? Guess how many compliments it takes to make that scar go away? They say that it can take up to a hundred compliments to make that scar go away. Okay. So who here wants to look like this? No, nobody wants to look like this. Who wants to make people look like this? No, nobody wants to make people look like this. No, you don't. Who wants to, you want to make people look like that? You come here. Come up here. Are you, are you a bully? You're a bully. Why are you bully? Because. Because why? Because I'm mean. Why are you mean? Because I'm like You bully your brothers. How old is your brother? How old are you? So you bully your older brother. Well, why do you bully? Why do you feel like you need to bully? If you, if you had to be really, really honest, do you like it when people are needy or do you like it when people are nice? No. You like it when people are nice. What's your name? Your name's Skylar. Skylar, I'm not going to have you bully me. 
you would be a really good bullet. Do you guys think Skylar can be a really nice kid? Yeah! And who wants to see Skylar be somebody that's really nice? Who wants to see Skylar be somebody that, that treats people with respect and with love? See all your friends, Skylar? See, all your friends want to see you be nice. All your friends want to see you be people with love. You have a lot of friends. I want everyone to give 100 compliments to us. What else can take away scars? A hug can take away scars. What else? Kindness can take away scars. What else? You forgot. <laughs> what else? Being nice. If you hurt someone's feelings, what are you supposed to say? If you've been mean to someone in here, what should you say? So what he's saying is sometimes, sometimes we get picked on, right? And what's the first thing you guys should do if you get bullied? What's the first thing you should do? You should tell, uh, tell an adult. Exactly. I'm really sorry that that happened to you. But you know what you can do, right? You can stand up for yourself and you can tell them that you don't like it and they need to stop. But you need to tell an adult, okay? We don't talk about like the big party or the big thing. We don't talk about that. No one remembers. No one cares. The only way you remember a high school party is if you get like pregnant or MIP. <laughs> that's it, you know? Hopefully that's not your story. But that's it. Like, that's what it is. I'm serious. Like, you don't remember it. And for those of you that that's your lifestyle, like look at me. For those of you that are living for that Friday and Saturday night thing, like I get it. I fully get it. I grew up in a town just like this one where there was nothing to do. So we did that. Like, I fully understand it. I lived it. I was the guy that led people to it. Like, that's who I was. But all of a sudden, we made this list and we got crazy about it. We were like, let's do 100 things that don't involve drinking and drugs before we graduate. Let's make it awesome. Let's make it epic. So we just came up with all these crazy, wild things that we wanted to be about. We'd get done with the basketball game and we'd be like, yo, we gotta knock out like this one and this one tonight because we gotta do this one and this one tomorrow. We just did all this stuff and it was crazy. When we talk about that list, we don't talk about parties or any of that other stuff. We don't care. No one cares. Like, we, Christmas time, we made these, like, cookies, and we wanted to give them to them, like, the nursing home. And I remember, like, blowing it, and they were terrible. I screwed up the flour, I don't something went wrong. But, like, we just made these cookies, and we were like, they're so bad. So we just covered them in frosting and sprinkles, and we were like, well, let's go give them out, you know? So we <laughs> gave out these, like, really bad cookies. And I just remember, like, walking up to this woman, giving her this feel, like, hey, I made these, they're really bad, I'm super sorry, and, you know, gave them to her, and she gave me a hug, and when she hugged me, she licked, like, the deepest part in my ear. It was like, <laughs> I just remember, like, it, like, happened, I had short hair back then, but it happened, and I just remember being like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was just like, what? What was that? And I just, like, and I turned around, and, like, my whole basketball team was just like, <laughs> You know, like I just like we talk about that. We talk about that all the time. We don't talk about other stuff. Because you won't. Like I know you guys think you will, and you know you think you'll remember it. You won't. Like it won't matter. But then this really weird day happened. And for you seniors, it's really close. It's that last day. Like your last day at school. I'll never forget why. Like cleaning out my locker with the same locker for four years, I'm cleaning it out, and I'm just like, I'm done here. Like, I'm not playing football here again. I'm not playing basketball here again. Like, I'm not walking these halls. I'm not going to these classes. Like, I'm not going to see these guys like this again. Like, my time here is done. And for you seniors, it's real close. And it's, you start to have this moment where you're like, man, did I do everything I could? Did I, like, help everybody I could? Did I give everything I had? Like, if I could go back to being a freshman when I start over, and I'm, like, thinking about all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe, like, my time here is done. My guidance counselor walks up, and she's an incredible, and she's like the reason I even got into college. She walks up, and she's just like, Mike, you know, congratulations for all happiest prize you did, you know? I'm just like, what's oh, up? Like, thank you, you know? I'm just like, I did it. Like, I got through. She's like, I need you to do one more thing before you leave. Calvin is in the library, and he's crying, and he's super upset. And I was like, first inclination, I was like, who do I need to kill? Like, what happened? Like, who made fun of me? She's like, no, 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 it's not like that. Like, he just doesn't understand you leaving. Like, can you please just go to the library and talk to him? Like, take your friends and just go try to explain to him like, what this is. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I was like, but I just got to ask you like, one more question. Like, Where's the library? It's <laughs> over there with books. <laughs> books. All right. You know, so I just got there. And I just remember, like, walking into the library and just, like, there was my little dude just, like, sitting there by himself crying. And I was like, what is the deal? Like, 
Walked up to him, Calvin, Bill, are you okay? Like what, like, what happened? What's going on? And he looked at me and he tried to explain, like, he thought because I was leaving and because our friends were moving on, like, that he was going to go back to that kid that was just no friends sitting in the halls by himself. Like, he thought it was over. He thought it was done. And it broke my heart. Like, it, tore, it just tore me up because I was like, he didn't understand that he changed our whole school. Like, this little kid right here had no idea how big of an impact he made on the rest of us. Today I have questions for you. You know, some of you seniors are about done. So this question is going to mean a lot. And that question is, you know, what's your legacy here? Like, what are you going to be known for here? You seniors have a couple weeks left to, to write that story. And then it's done. You juniors have a year left. And what are you going to be known for in this school right here? Are you guys the people who want to change this culture? Are you guys the people who want to stand up for kids who are bullied? Are you the girls who want to not see drama happen on Facebook or not cause drama on Facebook but be bigger than that and change the culture? I'm serious. I'm, I know you're talking to each other because it's real, because it's real everywhere, but you guys have to ask yourselves, man, what legacy are you guys leaving behind here? I spent the whole day talking to every kid in this entire school system, every single one. Who do you think they're looking up to? There's a really special girl from this town sitting in the front row here. She wants to leave Fairbury, Nebraska and go fight sex trafficking in another country. That's what she wants to do. From your small little town, that's where she wants to go. That's the kind of person I'm talking about. That's the kind of person you can get behind and go make a difference. But which one of you is it going to be? Which one of you is going to step up and be uncomfortable and change the culture here? But it all starts with that question. What legacy are you leaving behind? I got some time? Yep, yep, yep. Ten minutes. Sick. All right. I got, I got some shirts up here for people who ask good questions, not creepy ones like, can I have Ryan Shecker's cell phone number, creepy judgment? <laughs> <laughs> Just get out now. All right? <laughs> what kind of books did he like? Books. <laughs> I didn't read a lot. But I still don't. But he just—he just read a lot. Like he was just really into reading. That was what he did. Yeah. What college did I go to? You ever heard of Duke University? I didn't play that. <laughs> go Google Mike Smith basketball. You'll find it. What got me back into skateboarding? Um, I got a phone call from a nonprofit in Lincoln that had a bunch of skate parks. And they were like, hey, we got these ramps. Like, you're working with a lot of kids. Like, if you want them, you can have them. But you got to start, like, a, a nonprofit in Lincoln. You got to keep it in Lincoln. And that phone call for me was really weird because I had that moment where I was like, oh, man, like, I skated around on college campus a little bit. But, like, getting back into skateboarding on that level seemed like, you know, like, how many T-Roys were going to be out there telling me that I couldn't do it? You know what I mean? And so, but I didn't care. And I just went for it. So me and my friends, like, we slapped ramps together. I put it in the mall because I didn't know where else to put it. And, like, that's just what we did. So that's kind of what got me back into it.